that you enjoy. I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Story number one. A Ship Full of Wolves. Written by Dragonson04. Sir, they've disabled navigation and engines with that last hit. We can't move. Sir, shields are down by 28%. Sir, held breach on deck 5. So many things went so very wrong on that run. We were barely into unclaimed space between territories when the pirates hit us. We only had passengers aboard, no valuable cargo, nothing worth the time and effort for a full attack. And yet, they attacked us anyway. Maybe it was a new captain trying to prove their mettle and skill. Or maybe they hadn't had any ship come by in some time and were bored. The pirate vessel was twice as big as us, its identity code being translated to Bite. Bristling with all manner of weapons, seemingly attached to a derelict helm at random and by any means necessary. Broadcast our surrender and a general distress call. Maybe we can get picked up by someone, I ordered, knowing that any rescuers would likely to find our corpses floating around the destroyed ship. The transmission had been away for five heartbeats worth of time when, much to everyone's shock, we received a response. This is the human vessel Fenra. We picked up your distress signal. Do you need help? Humans. Humans? It had been 50 cycles since they made their debut to the galaxy, and my people, the Biro, were the first to offer them friendship. That being said, I had never seen one with the flesh. As captain, it was my duty to respond. Yes, Fenra, this is the Vulcan. We do need assistance. We are currently being overtaken by a pirate vessel. One more solid hit, and we will be dead. Copy that. We are inbound. Fascinating. No hesitation, no thought that it could be a trap set by pirates. A simple, we are inbound. Arriving in three, two, one. And what an arrival it was. While the pirate vessel was twice ourselves, the Fenra shattered it, easily ten times bigger than the pirates. As it approached, local gravity distortions rocked my little ship. From what I'd heard of humans, it was surprising that there was no visible weapons, just a massive engine intake at the bottom of the hull. Oh gods, that wasn't an intake, that was the barrel of a truly titanic weapon, like a gaping maw of some eldritch abomination. It yawned open, seemingly wanting to swallow the pirates whole. Attention, pirate scum! The human said over the open communication frequency, My ship is here to assist our allied vessel. You will stand down, or you will be destroyed. You have 20 seconds to comply. 20 seconds? 20 heartbeats were the time. All things considered, a generous allotment. The pirates seemingly froze solid. No communication was made. No declaration of surrender was given. They sat there. Likely, the senior officers were screaming at their captain to surrender, but the captain wasn't willing to do so. The captain's stubborn nature would be the cause of what happened next. First, the 22nd time limit passed. Second, several escape pods were launched from the pirate vessel, though not enough to account for the entire crew. Third, the pirate vessel was erased. What seemed to be a directed supernova out of the eldritch mouth of a weapon, the Fenrir reduced the bite to nothingness in an instant. Some kind of tractor beam from the Fenrir picked up the escape pods, as easily as I would have picked Kari fruits off the ground. Vulcan, come in, Vulcan. This is the Vulcan. Go ahead, Fenrir. Do you need anything else? Our engines and navigation have been disabled, and we couldn't go into light speed anyway because of a hull breach. Any chance that you could give us a ride? No problem. We'll pull you into one of our cargo bays. Where were you headed? We're taking 100 passengers to Valis 4. Copy that. I'll come down and meet you myself once you're in. The tractor beam was swift, but gentle, pulling us in. The cargo bay itself was larger than most of our shipyards. 
Why did the humans build such massive ships? I was concerned that the human levels of gravity and human composition of atmosphere would be most uncomfortable, as I knew humans came from a death world. My fears were unfounded, as they had apparently adjusted those settings beforehand, and exclusively to the bay. I finally met the human behind the communications, tall by galactic standards, though not the tallest I had ever seen or heard of. Four appendages, two lower legs that looked like small tree trunks, where mine were twig-like in comparison. Their upper limbs were not wings, but seemed very similar in shape to their lower limbs, though they used their tools with their appendages and exclusively walked on the lower ones. Far more muscular and dense than my own people, and hair instead of feathers. Captain, I said with a bob of my head. Captain, he said with a bob of his. Well, at least he knows Byron manners. Thank you very much for the rescue, though uh, that seemed a bit overkill. Obliteration of an entire ship. It was necessary. We've already begun to interrogate the captured pirates. Apparently, their captain had decided to suicide attack was warranted. They were going to ram you and then self-destruct. After that decision was made, the first officer shot the captain in the back of the head and ordered the ship to be abandoned. Most didn't listen. Why go to such lengths? I questioned. Because you are our friends. You birds were the first to offer us a metaphorical hand of friendship. We humans don't forget such things. But, um, why? I could see my question wasn't translating well. Fundamentally, humans are pack creatures. Many xenobiologists compare us to a predator on our homeworld. Wolves! The pack is strong. The pack survives. The pack takes care of its own. And you are our allies. So you are part of our pack now. So, uh, you and your crew in this, this uh, pack. And my crew is now part of that. The idea wasn't completely alien to me. The Byro had a flock mentality. Strength in numbers. If enough of us get away from a threat, we will survive. Though individuals may be lost. Um, no. The captain seemed a bit embarrassed. No. The Fenra and the Vulcan are the members of the pack I speak of. Four sister ships and an FTL-capable dock flying in a very loose 20 light minute span across space. We picked up your signal first. You could have easily gotten a dragon, chimera, or hydra, or our dock, and or repair bay leviathan picking up your signal. You called for help. The pack answered. You, um, you have a dock that is capable of FTL. Yes, well, I say dock, but the leviathan is actually a full-blown orbital station capable of fitting the four ships inside of itself. Easier to keep up the patrol when we don't have to keep going back and forth from core system for basic repairs. It was then that I knew I was in the presence of a race that I would forever call friends. I now know that no one else will likely read this, as it is a personal journal. But I will still say what I learned on that day regardless. To the allies of humans, humans will do anything for the ones they call friend. Count yourself lucky to be considered one. To the enemies or potential threats to humans and their allies, never assume that any human vessel is alone, because humans always hunt in packs. End of story. Story number two. The Drums of War, written by Wyvern590. The Vixkayal have warred throughout the galaxy for millennia. Countless civilizations have fallen before our might. Our drums have heralded our coming since the beginning. This was our way, and this blue and green pearl of life before us would suffer the same. We have come, humans. Prepare yourselves. This was our message to those below, as prescribed in the law of the coming war. We gave them one rotation of their planet to prepare. Whilst we waited, soon their time had come, and we deployed our drums. Massive cylinders extended from the sides of our ship, and the drummers swung their mallets, beating the taut membranes with a manic frenzy, showering the planet below with the most terrifying of sounds. We descended in dropships, landing in a brilliant green field. 
The final wave of base drifted away from my legion as the final blow struck. Silence ensued as my legion prepared to face the army across the field. However, before we could move to engage the enemy, we heard it. At first I thought it to be an echo, but beating continued. It was quiet, very quiet, the faint beating of a drum. It was our tradition that we never engage an enemy while the drums of war still beat. Ours and theirs. Strangely, our scouts had reported no drums amongst the enemy. These humans stood awaiting the battle stoically. Their weapons pointed at our warriors from across the field. We waited for the final beat of their drums patiently. Soon, the darkness was upon us and still we waited. We saw their scouts amongst the local flora. We saw, but we did nothing, for the drums of war still beat. I contacted my superiors, who reported much the same across the planet. After three rotations on the planet, I decided to act. I approached the front line of the enemy, alone and unarmed. I would be the first to face the enemy. Soon, a lone human emerged from its ranks. It walked towards me, though unarmed, it was not alone. When it stood before me, I spoke in their tongue. Human, why do you belong the coming? I asked. The coming, it responded, the inflection in its voice indicating a question. The coming war! We have waited for you to finish the beating of your drums as you have waited for us. Why do you insist on prolonging the coming ritual? I answered. I knew the human language, for I believe that language is an important element in understanding the enemy. However, time constraints forbade my study of their body language and expressions, though I believe he is confused, just as my patience waned, he stated. What are you talking about? We aren't beating any drums. Do not lie to me, human. You are not the first to try this. Others have tried to forgo the deaths by prolonging the coming ritual. It won't work. Our traditions are important to us, but we will begin the attack while they still beat if we have to. I said, glaring at him. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. I cut him off and leaned closer to the human. Stop this lying! I screamed with as much terror as I could put into their language. I saw what I believed to be fear shoot across their faces, when suddenly I felt the tone of the drums shift. Now they were louder and faster. I examined the humans that stood before me, assured that the shift indicated a coming and attack. They appeared tense but stood idly. Again, I strained to identify the source of the drums, as they seemed to be nearby. It was so clear, here amongst the humans, it was then that I realized they weren't as clear earlier, when I stood alone. The humans stared back at me as my gaze slowly shifted from one to the other. I began to follow the beating. Surely, they cannot be far. I followed the beat and found myself closer to the one who spoke. The drums beat even faster as I placed my auditory canal against the thoracic cavity. Realization flooded my mind. I returned to my legion, just as my superiors landed. They wasted no time in coming to me to reveal the location of the enemy drums. My lords, I proclaimed, kneeling before them in accordance with our laws. We should not fight these humans, for the drums of war beat within them. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And 